A difficult and bloody civil war in Somalia led to the overthrow of the dictator Siad Barre in 1991. Children as young as eight take part in the fierce and bitter fighting that continues as the powerful clans now battle each other for supremacy. Mogadishu, a once beautiful city split by a front line dividing disputed clan territories. Armies of the warring factional leaders patrol here, along what is more locally known as the Green Line, a corridor of former homes and schools with grisly reminders of past skirmishes. Forced out of their homes by devastation and starvation, many Somali people have fled to makeshift refugee camps. The harsh reality is that with no ceasefire in sight, aid agencies are unlikely to intervene and conditions are likely to worsen. On almost every street, burnt out tanks now provide million dollar playgrounds. A poignant reminder of the failed US-led United Nations mission, Operation Restore Hope. Among those American forces was a young Marine, Hussein Adid. In what is a unique twist, he has now returned to Mogadishu as the successor to his late father, General Farah Adid, a staunch foe of the Americans. The late general was the self-elected president and leader of one of the more powerful factions. He died from injuries he received from fighting last week. The new president of the Republic of Somalia has announced the continuation of his father's policy of pacification. Disarming is part of this policy, and these soldiers are keen to do their job well. We're doing a good job. We are disarming the bandits. It's a big job. Killing those who disagree is also part of the policy. We have the authority. If we are ordered, we shoot. If we don't, we won't. We have the permission to kill. Back at the front line, battle-weary fighters hardly flinch as shots ring out. Others are more tense. Hopes of a ceasefire have been dashed by Hussein Adid's adherence to his late father's policies. Ali Mahdi, the North Mogadishu leader, saw pacification as a barrier to Somali reconciliation. We were negotiating with him for five years. and He never accepted what is, what is the desire of the people? He never accepts us. He is the man uh, who wants only to have the power through the parallel of the gun. In agreement is faction leader Osman Atu, traveling here in protected convoy. He parted from the late General Adid's clan and left his post as finance minister last year. The reason we do have this built is I did want to take Somalia, conquer Somalia by force. And uh, that is creating another dictator. The government's response to such condemnation by one of its own was to avoid it. This is a family affair. We, will not, we don't represent family affairs. I don't think it concerns the government. A sense of normality pervades this market. The goat sellers are finding the trade sluggish. The only real economic activity is that of the cat trade. Cat, an amphetamine-like drug, perishes quickly in the heat, so each morning it is flown in from Kenya. We like cats. It gets rid of fatigue and staves off nightmares. It also makes the work easier. It doesn't do you much good though. Cats may relieve the tedium of war and create trigger-happy fighters, but these young men are deadly serious in their struggle. I believe I will die when Alamad decides. 
لكن مركو ريزون مليون يسي. people need me to defend them. I have no rights to be afraid. بس كسر ديكان عايز أنا مريون عايز أشرد إلى يقرأ. تاسوي. Hussein Adid inherits a loyal army that his late father, General Adid, forged from warring militias, freelancers, and the former National Army. They are paid to carry a gun and put aside clan differences. We understand the badness of the clans. Now we are united as a national force. These rival faction fighters have no uniforms. They paint their technicals gaudy colors and possess a certain bravado, but no one doubts their commitment. These technicals are cannibalized aid vehicles with a machine gun or anti-aircraft gun mounted in the rear. As survivors of numerous battles, many young fighters believe the secret of their success lies in their willingness to die. It doesn't matter if I die. Because when I'm dying, I am defending myself and my leader. So if I die, no problem. Bermuda, a small enclave in the heart of Mogadishu, has turned to Islam in its search for a peaceful solution. Former wild militiamen are now running their technicals under the banner of Islam, the newly established Islamic court. As protectors, they bring order to the people. It's amazing. Before, they were robbers breaking into Muslim homes. Now they're normal people who believe in the Quran. Elman, a peace campaigner, sought a different solution to the peace problem. We want to make revolution with the sports because no one can stop the sports. Elman took young fighters under his wing and by teaching them football, reformed them. Last five years, we have seen only the clan leaders. They get a uh, lot of opportunity. The clan leaders and the warlords, the gunmen. But today, we are celebrating. We have no gun. In Mogadishu's highly volatile and unstable conflict, there is no place for such celebrations. Last month, Elman was killed. Osman Arto and Ali Mahdi see reconciliation and negotiation as the only way forward to a peaceful end to the conflict. Most of the, of the clans, of most of the Somali people, are one side. And for a reconciliation conference, and for, therefore, they are for uh, having a, a central authority. Our intention is to reach ultimately the goal of the Somali nation peacefully. But uh, I am sure uh, what we are trying to do now is to create Somali nation. And uh, to create Somali nation, we need a multi-clan uh, forces, militias, to get together. And uh, that symbolizes and is the start of the Somali nation. Osman Arto's advice last year to the late General Adid could be just as applicable to the young Hussein Adid today. Renounce so what he called so-called government, renounce all the violence and join the peace process. <laughs>